Two matches done in pretty quick time here for this uh, China Masters on the HSBC BWF World Tour, Super 750. Women's doubles is coming up next. Jong Na Eun and Kim Hai Jung of Korea will be taking on Pearlie Tan and Tina Murlitharan of Malaysia. So looking at the bracket there, the path towards the quarterfinals. And we've got uh, that match here as we see coming up. The winner will take on Adamiura or Sakuramoto or Kim and Kong of Korea, the third seeds. This one could well be a bit of a marathon when we look at their records as well, their rankings. With me here in the commentary position, who just joined us is the former Commonwealth the European Games champion and uh, most significantly, of course, Olympic bronze medalist at the Rio Games. Chris Langridge here. Very good morning to you, Chris. Now, I'm going to ask Chris about the uh, conditions in just a short while as we look at the head-to-head -head between these two. And uh, it is one apiece. Malaysia Masters was the last time they met. Tan and Tina winning that one. Chris, uh, you, you've had a, a look at, at how things are down there. Give us your uh, assessment of it. Well, we're looking at uh, the players here. Jong Na Eun is 23. She's from the capital Seoul, 167 centimeters tall. They have played as high as third in the world. That was up just under a year ago. Obviously looking to get back into that sort of uh, area in terms of rankings. They uh, watch them uh, a little bit at the career masters. Kim Hai Jong is 25, 162 centimetres tall. And they have won four, sorry, uh, two titles, three ti titles together. Korea Masters, as I said, then they won, they did well there. Recently, Japan Open last year and the Korea Open as well in 2022. opponents from Malaysia really have had a good year or so. Pearlie Tan is 23, 164 centimetres tall from the north of Malaysia, Kada. And uh, currently 12th in the world. They were fifth at the start of this year. Just slipped a little bit since then. Commonwealth Games champions, by the way, in Birmingham last year. Sorry, Tina Moralitharan is uh, 25, 164 centimetres tall from Klang. We had a capital Kuala Lumpur. And Ready to play. Looking at their achievements in terms of titles, as uh, Zhou Aoji from China, our umpire. Two titles won together. Latif Jahari of Indonesia is our service judge. They won the Swiss Open and very memorably the French Open. First ever Malaysian women's doubles pair to, to win that. That really put them on the map. And then this year at the Malaysian Masters and the Hong Kong Open, they were runners up. How do you see this one uh, looking, Chris? I think it's a very, very even game. You've got 11 in the world. The Malaysians against 12 in the world. The Koreans, and last time they played each other, it was an hour and 33 minutes for only two games. 21-19, mm. 23-21.
I say, it's a very even, evenly balanced match. And of course, as you mentioned, keep an eye out for that drift. So at the moment, the drift, as Chris was mentioning, is going from where the Koreans are towards Ladies the Malaysians. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, that's the lengthways Kiel drift. And Tina Mulanihatian, Malaysia. And on my left, Jin Na En and King Wei Jin, Korea. Tina Mulanihatian. And there's a sideways drift as well that you were talking about, going from right to left. As we look Play. at it. start to that from Kim. Service over one law. Magic there from over. One, two. Yeah. Dancing on the uh, cord there. shot from Kim. Fantastic shot and that's where uh, she's used the drift incredibly because it's almost escaping three, as in it's moving one. further and further away from Tina here because that's the way the drift's going. If you get that to perfection it's such a dangerous shot but the drift can then just snatch it and mm. keep it going it can end up going out. Hey. It's a big arena as well isn't it? It's a, it's a lovely looking arena and it's very large in size. They've obviously only got three courts in here, but we probably could have had six, maybe <laughs> it's that big. I think it looks looks very, very professional. Oh, Kim in a good position to finish that off. Yeah, just fractionally snaps with it. Over. And you can see, obviously, the, the discipline Three. from all four ladies to be calm and composed with moving the shuttle around. It's integral in a slightly larger hall that you don't try anything too risky too early mm. on because the defences are so good. You have to build and work the rally to wait for the right opportunity, which Kim actually had at the end, but just fractionally snatched at it and missed it. by Pearly Tan. Yeah, brilliant shot. And, you know, you can clearly see, even at this very early stage, this isn't what I would describe as a no-lift haul. And by that, I mean an incredibly quick haul where you mm. can't really lift because the attack's so dangerous. You can see all four ladies are fairly, com well, very comfortable in the defence. Um, and they're happy to move the shuttle around and try and expose their opponents. And that rally then, I mean, Pearly summed up perfectly with the fantastic counter-attack. 
Both uh, these pairs have had similar records this year. 24 wins out of 38 for Jong and Kim, 31 out of 48 for Pearly Tan and Tina Marilla. Let's run about 65% or so. Just getting the uh, kind of the tone of this match already. Four, Long rallies three. we're having. Yeah, that's definitely gonna it's gonna be how the game's gonna go. We saw it the last time they played Malaysian Masters an hour and thirty-three minutes for two <laughs> games. Two games. The all England they met last year. Took an hour and twenty. That was three though. Service over for all. We talked about the drift, uh, Chris. What about the sort of the, the speed of the hall in general? Yeah, I'd say it's a slower hall, yeah. and that's why it's you know no player on court is desperate to um, to get the attack as such. They're calmer. They're moving the shuttle around. You can expose your opponent with making the court feel really big. And this is why in training we would do different styles because you need to play a different style in a different hall. So we play. Um, where you have to almost play a no lift style, which is integral in a, in a quicker hall, whereas this is a bigger hall, so you play, we would call it a big court style, which just means you move the shuttle around. The most integral thing is ah. making your opponents move, stretching them, twisting and turning them. Hey. Is it really a personal choice in what people prefer in terms of slower and faster? Yeah, there'll be different uh, nations. If I'm going to be incredibly simplistic, I would say <laughs> generally the, the Japanese, the South Koreans prefer the, the slower halls yeah. because they traditionally have the better defenses. So to move the shuttle around calmly and composed and countries as such as Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia prefer the no lift halls just because they're a bit more creative and a bit more dangerous in the, in the mid court and coming forward. But that by, you know, no stretch of the imagination is set in Seven, stone. Right. There are, are different pairs that, from different countries that hmm. do for a different style. Well, Kim and Jong, certainly in uh, Korea recently, where it was pretty slow, really enjoyed those conditions. <laughs> Played out some very, very long matches. Two one and a half hour marathons in a row, semi finals and finals. Now lead up Eight, to four. four. And this is the thing, obviously, in a quicker haul, you wouldn't really see any mistakes in the overhead just because more than likely you're going to get through without having mm. to be too creative. Whereas in a slower haul like this, you do have to be a little bit more patient and a bit more creative on the overhead. And you might just see a fraction more possibly miss hits just because of the drift or trying something a bit too good because you know you're not going to get through with a, a simplistic attack. Now, did they make the right call leaving that? <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. I think there's a lot of indecision <laughs> from everyone, but in the end, the Malaysians, <laughs> they did do exactly the right thing. Everyone looked at each other there for a second. <laughs> what was your personal preference? Um, Faster, I reckon. No, actually, oh, really? slightly slower. Oh. Yeah, just Nine, because, five. well, I mean, nothing too extreme. Okay. <laughs> any any time it was too drifty or okay. um, we would struggle. Right. But, and if it was too slow also, we didn't quite have the firepower to get through. But I'd prefer it. In Europe, generally, I prefer the conditions just because I was used to them. Yeah. Because, obviously, we're from a European nation and yes. there's slightly less drift. Whenever there was too much drift, we weren't as good. And, and as you said, not to generalize so too much, but that's 
think the case for European no. nations they're, they're playing in Asian conditions. A little bit more so, just because you know there are some exceptions. I know, say Kim and Anders. Yeah. Kim and Anders, uh, they're, they're very good, even in a drifty hall. Mm -hmm. um, they can adapt their style incredibly well. I'd say most other doubles pairs, there are mixed pairs that can obviously do it as well, but I'd say level doubles pairs in Europe, there are slightly less that are good in the unique conditions. Um, and I think it comes from, you're just not used to training in it day in, day out. You're used to it at a tournament, that's very different to training. Mm. Most of the European halls play true, and by that I mean there's not really a drift. Drift, right. Koreans comfortable in this sort of position. And I know they lost the point, but it, it's sometimes about wearing down your opponent as well, isn't it? To an extent, yeah. Because it's obviously a lot more physical to put in the attack. The right. integral part is when the Koreans are defending, they have to keep the, their opponents moving, which they are doing quite mm. well. Mm. Uh, and I'd say that the discipline the Koreans have in general is, is very good. And by discipline, I mean shot selection, uh, working the rallies, making their opponent move, doing the right thing. It's it's a fairly simplistic game, not very creative, but they're very, very disciplined. They're very good at it. And the amount of easy mistakes they'll make will be absolutely minimal. I mean, it's 9-7 in the first, and we've only had one rally that was short. Yes. You know, this is going to be an incredibly grueling game. Three. Yeah, good interception of the net from Jung. I'm talking about Jung. She's a quite a unique lady in regards to there's not many now, especially female doubles players that are playing two disciplines. And she's obviously right. very, very good at mixed doubles, yes. but also ladies' doubles. times where we've seen a, one of the first attacks of the rally gets through and it's just because on this replay here that's a great return look how low look how low Kim is when she's playing that and then she's in big trouble and this is why you have to stretch and expose your opponent to get the chance to be able to try and put the shuttle away very good that's nicely done yeah and that away. came from the attack we can see on the replay Kim, where she hits the inside tram, and it was a very, very well placed attack. I think it's this one here. You can see Pearlie's not quite far enough over there, puts her in trouble, and then it's just relentless pressure from the Koreans. But it was the placement on the attack from Kim, and Pearlie wasn't quite covering her line enough. So important for the player on the straight to be covering that line. Interval of the first game here, the Koreans up by three. Get some relations. Jong and Kim have a pretty decent record. Second round matches on the World Tour. 19 wins out of 25. They've won the last two. The last time they lost 11, in the second round was eight. at the Denmark Open against Mayu Matsumoto and Wakana Nagahara. Koreans on the attack the whole way through. 
And again, the, the reason the rally ends is the placement here again from Kim. On this one here, you see where the big gap is where Pearly mm. sit just sort of in the middle of the tram. Very well placed attack. And it's the only way really you can get through. We saw Jung previously in the rally going with, you know, good attack, but she just couldn't really get anywhere. And then Kim with the well placed attack that ends up getting through. at it perhaps there Tina 13 a I would say that you know as I said the slower conditions they do slightly suit the Koreans a little bit more than mm. the Malaysians just because the Malaysians for me are very creative uh, two skillful players good at moving the shuttle around but maybe physically they're not quite as dangerous as the Koreans and we're seeing that slightly at the moment but also the ends can play a part definitely because it yes. is slightly more of an endy hall um, but it is going to be a big task for the Malaysian pair just because of how long this game could last duration-wise. And every rally is such a long rally. Mm. Well, right now, the, the Koreans have got the drift in their favour. And you're saying even when they go into the other end, they'll, they'll be all right with that. This is the thing. They're so well disciplined that with a drift like this, because the haul is slower, if it was a very fast haul, I think yeah. it would be totally different. But because the haul is slower, they can afford to play the way they're playing, which is just calmly, like every time, just move the shuttle around, hit it away from their opponent, make their opponent stretched. Yeah, they're on a roll here, aren't they, the Koreans right now? Yeah, there's a good little setup there. 15, Smash from Jung down the middle. Kim knew where the shuttle was then going to go. Great interception at the net from Kim. Five in a row at the moment for the Koreans. It's another one. First Tina now Pali. Yeah, and it happens just because the amount of rallies where the Malaysians have got through the defence of the Koreans, I think it's one. It could be more, but it's, it's one or two, it's really not many and it starts to then blow in your mind. So when you get that chance, you think you've got to be better, and that's where just a few mistakes can creep in. Big lead now, bait for the Koreans. Oh, that's Jong, who we feel that she should make that shot. That run comes to an end. That's where the gap was, but such a nice shot. Nice net from Tina there. Seven out of 11 second round matches won this year alone by Jong and Kim. the aggressor there and because of the drift shots like that you know I'm, I'm confident Pearly knows she should make it but because of the drift the shuttle fractionally speeds up or slows down well, speeds up not a good way to explain it but it feels like the shuttle speeds up or slows down just because the drift kind of holds it or pushes it just a right. fraction and it can make it so much harder to make those easier shots 21 out of 33 second round matches by the time and Tina were a of one overall in their careers. Seven out of ten this year. Pretty good. They're in trouble here.
Oh, something a little different there. Nicely done by Jung. Yeah, and I have to say, the amount of unforced errors the Koreans have made, I think, is pretty much zero. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. and this is what I said, their discipline is phenomenal. Their consistency, incredible. And it's hard because the Malaysians are struggling to unsettle them at the moment. Oh. The Malaysians are getting the attack, but they just can't get through. Longest rally at 43 shots just had. I've got to say, it felt longer, but that one was very quick. And again, there, it's just fractionally, it feels like the shuttle speeds up just because of the drift. Mm. Hurley's not quite ready in that midcourt then. Just snatched at it. Do you think they're going to be happier being on this closer end? I think the so, faster yeah. end yep. in the next game? That was not what you intended, but got away with it. No, not for long. Service over 10, 19. Oh. The, wait, what? That was a rare unforced error? Yes, yeah, the drift. You just got to be so careful of anything 11, when you're pushing 19. it in a controlled manner. And mm. what I mean by that is almost soft because that's fairly soft shot, the drift can then take it. Killed off there by Kim. Service over. They've got a lot of game point points in hand here. 11. And it's wrapped up by okay. Jong and Kim. Very comfortably First indeed. Game, They've Jin enjoyed and, and the conditions so far. Kali Tan and Tina Morelithran will be hoping they can enjoy it now, being on this faster end in game two. But it's the first game to Jong and Kim, 21 11. <laughs> We Interesting to see um, during the interval there different Play. approaches from the coaches. We'll come back to that. Got different ends now, so that's what to keep an eye out for. It's just gone a bit long. First unforced error to the Koreans. Chris. Yeah, and just in the cross court there, that would be the danger shot in regards to when you're playing cross court and the drift it just keeps taking it and keeps taking it if you and we did see in the first kim played an incredible one and it turned out to be a winner but that's where you just got to be a fraction careful where you aim so it's a better start here for the malaysians um we were just looking at the um at the interval as we look back at the shot here brilliant touch phenomenal touch and tina there Koreans spent about maybe 15 seconds with their coach. The Malaysians talking throughout. That's a 
good winner as well. Great start. Yeah, and we've already seen the difference in ends. But yeah, I'd say, Three, you know, lock. for the Korean coach, the integral thing is you don't want to say too much to your players. You mm. want to keep them in their rhythm. The most integral thing is getting them to understand the different ends. So things will change and also informing them your opponents have to change what they're doing. If they don't change what they're doing, it's unlikely they're going to win. Right. So it's just making them aware of that. And we've already seen the difference. You know, the pressure the Malaysians are putting on the Koreans totally different. Look at that. Yeah. You know, we've had only a few rallies and already so much more dangerous in the attack than Malaysians. And mm. it is the end that's playing a part. And look how quick these points are being accrued. Yep. And the Koreans are playing pretty similar to how they played in the first, but also they have to change things up slightly because they're down the more difficult end to defend. First point on the board now for Jong Kim. Service over, one, four. looked up there unsure of herself there Service over. I think possibly it could have just caught a light and just possibly caught the drift at the same time you think how many unforced there as we've seen mm. I know it's not a lot don't get me wrong it's only 5-1 but I think more more already than, yeah than in the whole of the first first yeah. game and again another one as you said even if you had a bit of time here yesterday it's completely different to now actually playing a match, isn't it, on the it day is. of? It's because of the emotions, everything. Whereas in training, yeah, you're getting used to the hall, but it is very, very different. And the hall can fractionally play different on different days. Right. And also different courts. Yes. So let's say you got court three, as an example, to practice on, but you actually end up in court one. It can play totally different. Much better, much better from the Koreans. So now... What, what did they have to do now so being on that over. on that end, so Chris, from the Korean point of view? Six. We've seen how effective the Malaysians are. Yeah, and this is the thing, they've got to, it's not take a chance because that's too much, but they've got to push up a little bit more mm. to try and move the shuttle around with a bit more speed because if they move the shuttle around too slowly and the Malaysians get the attack and they're on the attack, we've already seen their attack's so much more dangerous this side, they know they can get through. Right. So it's integral for the Koreans to be more active in defense, not be quite as slow with moving the shuttle around. as well it's, it's a bit trickier for the Malaysians to lift this side um, as in you can lift out because you're fractionally with the drift with the drift yes yep. we didn't see that from the Koreans because the first game they did everything so well right Chris mentioned we've seen more unforced errors over in these first few seven, points than we have the entire first game from them. The thing is as well, when your attack, uh, sorry, the attack from your opponents has a little bit more firepower yeah. on it or a bit more speed, it, it makes everything so much trickier. And this is why sometimes you see a pair will play someone who's got a devastating attack and they'll make more errors than they normally make because they're more concerned about mm. the attack of their opponents. So much better from the Malaysians. It's such, a, you know, it looks like a different match. It does. And this is the thing: it's the Koreans now have to find a solution. The Malaysians couldn't really in the first down that end, but the Koreans have to try and find a way because otherwise it is starting to slip away, almost exactly the same the, as, as the, the first game. Yeah. And of course, the interesting thing is the third game, if it does go there, which at the moment they appear to do, so they all get a chance at both ends. Right between the two from Palitan. And again there, clean winner on the overhead. We didn't see one of those in the first. Yeah. Nine, three. But I suppose you use the second game now. If you're Jong and Kim and, and you're trailing by six, you're gleaning all you can for that third game now. And there's, there's different ways you can analyze it in regards to if you're very confident that your fitness is considerably better than your opponent, mm. you can almost try Ten, your best to work three. them now. It's not as simple as that because at the moment the Koreans are struggling with the when they're on the defense. Right. Um, but they've got to try and change their game to find a solution because if they keep playing in a fairly passive way as they are, the Malaysians attack with the drift is just too effective. Yeah. It was 
was a difficult one there for Perlington. Service over for Ken. Trailing by six here. Errors. First one I think I've seen from the Malaysians in the second game. It's important now that the Malaysians aren't phased by just these two uncharacteristic rallies as such. They had a slight indecision in the rally before and then a, a simplest, uh, fairly simple, sorry, unforced error just then. They need to forget about these two rallies and just carry on with the game plan that they had. by Tina Murilitharan and it's a good lead that they have here in game two. Six points in front, but they've lost that first game. that is quadrilingual English Malay Bahasa English sorry Bahasa Mandarin and Tamil so you can understand what the coach is saying in Mandarin a yeah, little bit of uh, Bahasa I picked up there he said don't think about it What that was in reference to. Quite oh, incredible that five. she can understand four languages. Four languages. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And that can actually prove an advantage just because as a unfortunately only one language I can speak. <laughs> but obviously uh, English being the most commonly spoken. Yeah, you want to be able to not have the others understand. Exactly, it. and it sounds very silly, but you know, when you're coaching and your coach is shouting on information if they do. Yeah. They have to shout on loud enough that you can hear. Which means the other guys can... Exactly. <laughs> and obviously I was at a massive disadvantage because I couldn't understand any other coach. <laughs> um, because <laughs> my language capabilities were very basic. Um, and you coached in France as well. Yep. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, well, my French was non-existent, right. um, which didn't help. Uh, and yeah, it did prove a little bit more complicated than I first thought, just with the language barrier, just because you've got to give the correct inf information very quickly, mm. uh, clearly, and when the other nation obviously doesn't have English as their first language, it's not quite as easy as you, right. you would hope. Um, incredible shot. That is a great shot, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant vision, but not just vision, also the ability to play that shot with that quality. Because look how low she is there. Yeah. You know, you mentioned earlier, this is almost unrecognizable, isn't it, from the first game? Well, it's almost, it is and it isn't in regards to, if you look at the, the pairs totally, but if you look at what's kind of happening, it's exactly the same, just a, a full reversal, reversal as such, yeah. yeah. And the Koreans, this second so game, have played almost similar to what they did in the first, but you can afford to do that down the other end, but this end, the end that the Koreans are at now, you've got to be a lot more proactive, you've got to be a lot more aggressive with stepping up, moving Aye. forward, putting more stress and pressure on your opponents. 7-15. Remember the first game ended 21-11. 
favour of the Koreans. Could well be something similar here. And of course, as I said, we go into the third and they'll both swap ends at the midway point. interesting because the previous two matches 17, were very seven. straightforward wins both one in straight games I think the slight difference with this one is they're so evenly matched ah! yeah. you know they're one place away from each other in the world rank um, earlier matches just a fraction the similar level very similar level mm. but one pair or one player sorry played incredibly well to make life so difficult down both ends for their opponent second game it's definitely not finished but it's you know almost and if you think the game we spoke about in the Malaysian Masters um, the whole match so far so 36 minutes yeah would be shorter than one of the games um, at the Malaysian Masters and, and that's the thing we, we are almost at the end of the second game so and yeah, nine, it's really quick for in regards to these two pairs yeah, How and it, it's been a big story of whichever pair is down the end mm. furthest away from us has struggled a lot with coping with what their opponents are doing down the other end and the drift. Just for the, you know, those maybe newer to the sport, Chris, watching, you know, the conventional wisdom is you, you'd rather be against the drift, right? That's how they... It's... I There's think no it, rule of thumb. Right? Yeah, I think it depends, to be honest, because each pair, each discipline has a slightly different um, take on it in right. what they prefer. It could be a pair has a phenomenal attack. And when I say phenomenal, I mean, you know, a top 10 smash in the world and they're yeah. incredibly quick around each other. So um, and then they might be absolutely unplayable, can. you know, when they've got the, the wind with them because their smash is through the roof, as in the, the speed no of chance. it. Yeah. yeah. But then on the flip side, you might have a pair that, whose defense is their main game and they don't have the firepower to get through. And then when they're down the slow end, they're not too fussed just because they can still handle it because their defense is so strong. Hi. The biggest thing is for me, when the if this does so go for three games, which is looking likely, but will. Yep. the Malaysians, when they start down the, the more difficult end in this match, it's integral that they do change what they've been doing and they have a more positive, proactive start than right. either pair has currently done. out still a long long way to go for John and Kim 19. But this the second game the Malaysians have definitely controlled the vast majority of this game they've had the attack Koreans have been quite passive the Malaysians have moved the shuttle around a bit quicker and then on the attack they've been a lot more dangerous in a row here for the Koreans. 13-19. Uh, if they can't win it, they're going to at least work the Malaysians. The lead is still six. This 
what I mean. Oh. But the, this is the thing, the Malaysians down this end, they, they will make a mistake, or it's possible to make a mistake, sorry, if there's enough pressure on them, because going over and moving the shuttle around is a bit trickier with the drift, because you can force it out. But the Koreans haven't done that, they haven't put enough stress on their opponents. They've suddenly come alive in the second game, haven't they? It's the thing when you start to get the feeling of how to play, and it's just pressure. And then again, brilliant shot, great shot selection. See, Pearlie had to retract, she had to move back to give herself space and time. Not quite panic stations yet for the Malaysians. No, definitely not. She need to try and get the attack back. Oh, oh. And that's handed that straight back to the Malaysians. She knows it. And it's again, even those shots, it feels like it comes through a fraction quicker, and then when it does, you just snatch. And we can see there, Kim, she just fractionally snatched at it and missed it. Five game points here for the Malaysians. Between two, Tina Muralitharan once again. Okay. The Malaysians game. take the second game. We're going into a third. So they won game two, 21 of 15. So we go into this third game now, and really, Chris, it's about what you've learned, hasn't it, from both ends? Because now these pairs have experienced it. I want you to take them to game three. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, the Malaysians, in theory, are down the more complicated, trickier end. And they have, they don't have to, but they need to really try to change their tactics. They want to have a, a good start, and they want to make sure that Play. This is close as possible when they turn and change ends. So, yeah, they want to minimize the, the deficit if there is one, right? Yep. Yeah. 
So something like, what, three or four points max, I think? It's hard to say because if you look at the scores from the first, both were fairly comfortable, and I'd say only at the very end of the second game did the Malaysians just switch off a fraction to allow the Koreans back in. But if it was three points, four points, you know, nothing stopping them from being able to come back. But it's really important the closer they are, just even for that mental side of things as well. We've seen enough of that from Pearly because possibly has the best stop drop out of any of the ladies' doubles players in the world. Yeah, really nicely done. And I mean, that was played to absolute perfection, but I don't think we saw enough of that in the first or second from her. I can't recall actually when she did that. So important that the Malaysians aren't too passive, aren't too defensive in this final game, especially down that end. As we saw then, the pressure, the constant pressure, so tough to deal with. Onside hit. So, wasn't clear. We're going to have to prefer this. Excited as you may have heard the umpire. It is very clearly in. The drift even works obviously on the serve. You can serve a bit shorter when you've got the drift with you and it will go a fraction deeper, but a fraction makes a big difference between in and out. <laughs> yeah, I think you, uh, you really made the point about how different it is with these pairs depending on the rent. Yeah, and this is the thing in the in the second game, the Koreans from the rear of the court just then, we saw them get through. Second game, we didn't see any of that. Mm. And it's just because when the shot holds up or when it goes through, it's, it's quite a different thing. That's why it's so important that the Malaysians aren't too passive on the defense. They don't give their opponents too much time overhead. from Tina unfortunately was half court just because it, again it's so hard to get it away when you've got the drift coming at you see the lift there just really short I suppose the question is again for those who may not be so familiar with playing on these kind of courts Chris is how much of a drift is there that it can affect things like the lift yeah it can affect everything just because when you're under pressure if, uh, if you're trying to lift, but you know, you're know you under the pressure of the shuttle's coming through a fraction quicker and you're hitting against wind, essentially. Yes. It's never going to go anywhere near where you anticipate, and it's hard to have the power to do that. And for players that haven't played in a drift, it, it's, it is quite complex, just because it can be up to, I mean, it could be anything. I can't tell exactly, unless I went down and played, right. how big the drift is, as in if it's let's say, 8 inches to 12 inches. I can't tell exactly, but it, it's, it's a significant drift. And, and, and that's the thing. People will not appreciate that until you're actually on the court itself. Even up here where we are, we're quite high up, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's always almost double because it's not just you're fighting against the wind. You're fighting the wind coming at you and against it, if you understand what I mean. Yes. And that's why we saw in the last point, the shuttles come a fraction quicker and then it's going back a fraction slower. So at times it almost feels like double the actual mm. drift. So far, so good as far as the Koreans are concerned in terms of now a four point lead. Six, two. 
This was expected though, probably, right? It was, it was, but the Malaysians, when you're down that end, you can't afford any cheap mistakes. You've got to work, and you have to work so hard to work the rally. You've got to believe you will get through in the end from keeping the attack and working the rally with some variation. As we said, the Malaysians, if they do not have the lead by the interval, they would want to at least be within striking distance. Two or three points, maybe four. And they swap ends. Kim puts that away. Service over. Back Seven, up to four. Three. This is the difficult thing for the Malaysians. They had the attack the majority of that rally. But as soon as the Koreans get the attack, it's that short lift there. Yeah. As soon as they lift short, the, the pressure just piles on. I do feel the Malaysians, they're not moving quite at quick enough speed, which don't get me wrong, I get. They've been playing for 51 minutes, so it's hard to change mm. your pace. But the pace they're playing at is quite comfortable for the Koreans. They've got to do something a bit quicker or a bit more dangerous to try and get through the defense of the Koreans or to unsettle the Koreans. Yo. I think we had a net cord serve and then so a net cord return there. Four, seven. <laughs> Jong and Kim have a very good record against Malaysians overall. Six wins out of seven. Hangs in the balance. No one there from Pearlie, just forcing it a fraction. It's, what, it's exactly what can happen because you feel like, well, I can't get through. I've got to try something extra special. And it's that fine line between, yes, you've got to try something a little bit different, but you can't allow a cheap mistake. And it's all that hard work throughout the rally kind of goes to waste. Again, it was that variation over from the back, from, well, from both eight. of them, but here. Brilliant stop drop and then fantastic vision. But that's where they work so well because Pearlie yeah. does have this incredible stop drop and Tina's got the fantastic skill at the front of the court. And we've seen two of these stop drops and they've both been really effective in this final game. That's the drift behind them, remember the Koreans? Six, eight. All of a sudden. Now it's changing, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> well, that has got to Service hurt a little bit somewhere nine, for six. the Malaysians. Off the serve for Pearly Tan. That's frustrating, isn't it? It is, but serving into the drift is, is difficult because it almost holds up at times, and you think you have to serve that bit tighter so that your opponent can't get on it. Oh, they've survived.
again. Rally for sure now. Wow, the Malaysians were really behind it. And the Koreans looked on top. And they probably should have won it a lot, lot earlier. Yeah, but it's so integral for the Malaysians there. That's almost, I know it's not, but it's almost worth two. Because it's proving to the Koreans that they, they can survive these long rallies. Yeah. And they can also obviously win them. That would have taken quite a bit out of them. Normally these, there you go, 112 yep. shots. And yep. very early on, they could have won that, the Koreans. Yeah, I did think we got over 100 there, and that's a, a, yes, that's a real ladies' doubles rally of <laughs> everyone working so incredibly hard. Throughout the point. Service over. Would say that if you look at just nine. simple body language after the point, it looks like it took a lot more out of the Malaysians than it did the Koreans. The Koreans don't really look phased and look ready to carry on. They're the Malaysians, used to this, aren't they? yeah, <laughs> and you know they're happy to play those really long rallies. Yeah, they're uh, really taking their time with this. Yeah, they look uh, a little gassed at the moment. That's just a training rally for the Koreans. Play. Two points in it only. Most Koreans can hope for is four now. And it's down to just one point. This is very good as far as the Malaysians are concerned. here good play at the net there from Jung she's taking it early stopping the shuttle off really making her opponents move so obviously when you're in extreme stretch or difficulty and you're hitting in that situation against the wind it's so hard to get the shuttle away Looking at some of the previous matches they played, you know, it's no surprise that we're approximately at the hour mark of two and a half games. So they go into the interval with probably the 11, bare minimum they would eight. have wanted Jong and Kim. 11-8 in game three. This is very, very nicely poised. Oh, 
啊，进口我们要敢下手，当然我们老婆就是我们进口我们那边要敢下手。OK， 卖那边加多一点。OK， 他们也是累的，我跟你讲啊，谁敢加就赢了。OK。So now, move into the second half, change of ends. Let's see if there's a change of fortune as well. Malaysians trailing by three. Let's see who has adapted better. Start. Starting to look a little harder now for the Malaysians. And a good run at the moment. The Koreans four in a row here. on things. And they pull back those two points very quickly, the Malaysians. Yeah, just snatch sliding defense there, Koreans. Didn't quite move. Just because down the end is so much harder to defend. Just the pressure of having the attack. Trailing by only two. Three quick points for the Malaysian pair. It's probably as good as they would want it right now. Start to the post interval session, the Malaysians have bounced back brilliantly. Taken four in a row. That's why I do think on this core, especially, it's going to be quite important which end you choose because the most integral thing is finishing down mm. the good end if it is going to go to three games. And the Malaysians definitely have the advantage in regards to this. They're only a point behind and down the better end. The lead was five just a short while ago. <laughs> Pearly there, just not quite ready. I think the flick was okay. It wasn't great, but it was okay. And then just not quite ready in the defense. And these cheaper points are going to be so important because everyone's having to work so hard to win the, the longer rallies.
first out. Well, this is swung back and forth, isn't it? Good runs for either side now. Use that little bit of pressure on them for now. Something just uh, some light, I think that she just spotted it. Tina Muritra. All the little things that add up. It's so hard. If something out of the corner of your eye just catches it, mm. if it's a light, someone accidentally taking a photo and the flash. The other way. 13, 15. That shot there allows uh, Pearlie to put the pressure on and then Tina to finish. Again, the Koreans, they've really got to try their best that if they are having to defend, they've got to make their opponents move. And Pearly was on balance for that overhead. And then the shot that was played to Tina at the net, Tina's also on balance. so well to get themselves out of trouble. This one here. And then the Koreans are in trouble. And then that stop job I've been speaking about. They did so well, the Malaysians, to survive the pressure there. Now this third game has swung backwards and forwards. Yeah. Who's had the lead? Well, the Malaysians in front for the first time in this entire second game. Well, time for it to happen. For the third game, I should say. So many momentum changes. Mm. this one. Yeah. So just in front again, the Koreans. It's so important when the Koreans do get their half chance. The placement of their attack. And there from Kim, it's just good enough. It just went slightly across Hurley. 
because the power alone isn't probably going to do it. It's going to hold up a fraction due to the drift. It's so important they place it away from the racket or across someone or in an awkward position. so well to stay in it because their return of serve was not so good and then did incredible to get the next one back. I think there wasn't going to be anything else, was it? But very, very, very close right yeah. at the end. Well, that's what we felt this way, the way it was going. So, Bali Tantin and Marunath run up by one here. Still going this. I think it comes to an end. We're still Seven scrapping over. away here. 18. Really well read at the front of the court. From Kim here, and this one makes the move. Great interception. And it's so important for the net player on the Korean side of things to be so active to try and get that chance because from the rear of the court it's so hard to get through. 76 shots. 74 minutes in. It's so integral now. Every single choice that every player makes is correct but it's hard to do when you're obviously heavily fatigued after a long, long match so far. This one here from Pearly, just the wrong shot because it's going upwards through the middle, which allows Jung just to be able to intercept it and keep the pressure on.
lot of energy expended here, as you can see. Sorry, somebody's rather just taking a while to even start. No margin for error once they get to 20. one-sided. This one alone has taken something like 35 minutes already. Even getting up to the serve, it takes a while now, doesn't it, Chris? Yeah, the delay between points is pretty big at the moment. Our first match point on the board goes to Jong and Kim. That's disappointment for Pearly Tan. You can clearly see the frustration on Kim's face. She was in an okay position yeah. there. Winner by two draw points now required. Bit of a half-hearted challenge, that one, right at the end of this match. Why not? You hear the crowd saying, yeah, it looked out to me. I think from what we say, it's so hard to see, but I think we know who the crowd, the crowd <laughs> are backing. And the Malaysians are big, big crowd favourites here. Well, certainly out, that one. Which means we have a second match point for Kim and Jo. Koreans <laughs> have 
have one through. The second match point is converted. Another almighty battle between these two pairs. Malaysians on the floor. What a battle we've just had, haven't we? Yeah, incredibly close match, and it's such fine margins at the end. It could easily have gone to the Malaysians. They were leading. Match won by 11 8. And, and At the interval, the Koreans, it went to 13 8. Malaysians battled back, and then they were trading points for quite some time. From about 15, 15 14 onwards. Just one point at a time. Koreans finally seeing it through. But in keeping with all their other matches, this one was tight, as we predicted it would be. After two fairly one-sided games, the third one very, very close indeed. So Jong Na -an and Kim Hai Jong of Korea beat Malaysia's Pearly Tan and Tina Mora Lutheran 21-11. 15-21, 22-20, it's what happened in 21 minutes.